Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars And good afternoon. Welcome to today at the race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stanton Salter along with our odds maker Keith Fusel. Nice weather here to kick off the three day race week. And I know we've had some hairy weather mm -hmm. situations all week long with the impending Hurricane Florence hitting the Carolinas right. down there. We hope all our friends down there in the Carolinas are OK. We're expected to get some rain from from that Hurricane Florence uh, tomorrow. Uh, so, so we had had a little rain earlier this mm -hmm. week. We're off the turf today. Uh, we'll see about tomorrow. Tomorrow's uh, fall festival of racing was rescheduled right. for next Saturday. It's going to be Saturday, September 22nd, a week from tomorrow. I think a good move right. to move the fall festival of racing. You get to get it away from all this hurricane mess this weekend. Yeah, that was the right measure there. You, you know, they t they took the incentive. Let's go ahead. Made the decision early, gave all the you know the trainers and owners time to talk and, and plan, and, and maybe even have a few more horses open up the nominations yep. again. A few more horses were able to get in there and nominate. Uh, that was the right move for the fall festival. Moving it to next Saturday, the 22nd. And some of the best sprinters in the country nominated to that grade three express bet, Frank J. to Francis Memorial Dash. Grade one winners, Imperial Hint, Whitmore, XY Jet. Some other good ones nominated to the uh, to Francis Dash. That's going to be uh, a, a top sprint race on the East Coast. Banner day in store for you next Saturday. So yeah. hopefully we'll get some good weather next week for Fall Festival Racing. Like I said, weather not too bad today. Let's show you a picture of the main track. We are off the turf today. Main track, though, rated good. It looks like it's it's opened up fast, yeah. by the Harrows now. Yeah, we're going to go with fast. And we'll go ahead and start it at fast. Start Went up fast. there a couple minutes, yeah, before the uh, – before the show, took a look at it. Guys, maintenance crew's done a great job on our main track this afternoon. All right, good stuff. So we're yep. starting with a fast track this afternoon. Weather in the 70s. Let's get right to it. Race one's going to kick off the rolling super high five. We have that every race with seven or more horses. Low 15% takeout on the rolling super high five. So that's going to start race one today. Also race one, we kick off the early pick five. Both your pick fives here at Laurel Park, your best bet with that industry low 12% takeout. Mandatory payout here on the early pick five starting in race one. We're going five and a half furlongs on the main track, claiming 16,000, three and up, never won two lifetime. The conditions for race one, I go with the 10 on top on the outside, Zig Zillion for Stronic and Jose Corrales, Ryan Powell will ride this three-year-old son of awesome again, a real good second last out with a 71 buyer mm -hmm. uh, against Allowance Company up there at Delaware. Now, that was a number one, two lifetime uh, 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 optional claiming 12,000 up there at Delaware last out, but a good second there, a good third behind starter Allowance Company back in July here at Laura Park. It's a class relief today. I like the 10 Zig Zillion on top in race one. Yeah, Waterhaven, the one, the 10 Zig Zillion, look like they've come out of a little bit stronger races. Uh, Zig Zillion, that last out, uh, third place finisher, odds on, came back to win, I believe, an allowance. Ran an 83 in an allowance at Delaware. So Zig Zillion, uh, maybe may a slight edge, but, you know, in – going to take a little bit more money, I believe. But I, I like the one Waterhaven. I'm going to come back to Waterhaven. Uh, I tried the horse last time. Uh, was rated off the pace two races back in a stout eight other than. Uh, last time just burned up in the flow of that race. A little drop here today. In for the tag. In for the 16. 
Going to have to clear early. I don't want this sure. horse taking pressure. I hope he can go ahead and clear this field and dictate it. But uh, Zig Zillion could get the perfect stalking trip here because Great Nation coming out of the half-mile race at Timonium could force the issue too. So uh, one or the 10 to get you started. All right, so we both like the 10 and the 1. I like the 2 a little bit here. Great Nation, Charlie Frock, a winner going a half-mile at the Big T for Maiden 10. That's a pretty cheap race, but at least we know this horse has some half-mile quickness, mm -hmm. gets a light weight assignment, 113 with the apprentice Antonio. Antonio Quills, so the two great nation might might give the one Waterhaven a little pressure early on here today. Yeah, the six smoking hot factor. He's going to have to do better than what he did in his prior dirt races. Uh, was against the grain the last time we saw him on the main track on a sloppy seal track on the 21st of July, going a mile, a little middle move down towards the inside. He's improved ever since on the turf. Even the turf numbers have gone up. He's going to have to carry that improvement. Uh, he could rally in for a piece. I'll throw the 11 preaching George into my top four. Joan Rosado, the five pound bug of Board. This four-year-old for trainer Tim Keefe, a homebred four-year-old for owner breeder Thomas Teal. This horse coming off a long layoff, coming off about a nine, uh, ten-month layoff, uh, is getting a class relief. Uh, broke his maiden mm -hmm. on the turf last November against maiden 40, sprinting on a yielding turf course that day. Then tried a lounge company twice on the main track. No good. Now comes off the layoff. They were trying to get turf this race. Mm -hmm. They didn't. Uh, his race is on the main. Uh, we're on the main track mm -hmm. today. That uh, keep keeps just four year old in. He's in for a low 14, uh, 14,000 claiming price. So maybe a, a question mark there. Why into yeah. the tag coming off the layoff? Yeah, that, that's the biggest concern. Tim Keefe, one for five allowance to claimers on the dirt the last couple of years, but nothing with this kind of a layoff though. That's 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 a little concerning. Um, yeah, I would have thought maybe the scratch and give it one try on the turf as right. well as this horse ran in debut. So uh, a little sketchy here for the 11 preaching George. You'll know what to do with him. And the 12 Smash Williams you, you have uh, for Wayne Potts. Yeah. First off the claim for Wayne Potts. This horse draws in mm -hmm. off the AE and runs the 12 Smash Williams. Uh, uh, kind of a quick give up. Uh, you know, didn't really kind of fit the Pletcher uh, barn, I guess. They dropped, was claimed by Wayne Potts. Wayne's done a good job claiming at the lower levels in that $16,000 range down down to 10. Uh, Smash Williams, it looks, looks like the speed has kind of left him a little bit. See if he can ramp it back up in his first try for the new outfit. All right, so lots of action in race one. We kick off the rolling super high five and the early pick five in the opener. Race two, a nice maiden special eight to kick off the early pick four. We offer you three pick fours here at Laurel Park, an early middle and a late. I know you like the middle pick mm -hmm. four today, but let's take a look at the second to kick off this early pick four. Maiden special eight for two-year-olds. We're going five and a half furlongs. We have a video spotlight. We both like the one. Give me some truth for trainer William Comlow. Let's take a look at the debut August 4th here at Laurel Park. Here's Give Me Some Truth. Give Me Some Truth was down inside early, showed some speed, uh, and then had to ease back off of Rob. You're going to see this little trouble, though, in the green cap. Uh, shifted out to make a little move, maybe a little green shot inward from the right-handed stick. And gets in a little bit of trouble here late as the, as the leader kind of drifts in slightly at the 16th pole. This horse still with run, angling out, very willing to the wire, uh, was give me some truth. You won't get 29 to 1 on this horse today. I liked how he showed the speed from the inside. A little quicker internals than the rest of these two, 22 and 2. Uh, he's going to be forward in here. Picks up Prado this afternoon. Holds value in race two. Yeah, I think a nice rider change there. No knock against the bug boy, but uh, you're, going, uh, you're going from a bug rider mm -hmm. to a Hall of Famer here with Prado. So I, I like the one, maybe a tough uh, inside post going mm -hmm. five and a half. This horse going to have to show some uh, some early speed to maybe get good position or Prado just, just, just going to take back and just have to come mm -hmm. uh, and make a rally from behind uh, and, you know, ho hopefully with a clear running lane turner for home. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. All right, so we both like the one. Give me some truth. I go with the seven on top here. Passcode is my price play of the day. Passcode for trainer Steve Casey, a two-year-old son of Algorithms. A nice debut against mm -hmm. Maiden Special Weight right here at Laurel Park, August 12th. A good third that day uh, behind Boss Boss and Follow the Dog. Follow the follow the dog back in here mm -hmm. today. Uh, follow the dog, the two-horse. That horse going to show inside speed. I just think passcode blinkers on today. Taylor Hole stays aboard. I think the seven passcode gets the best trip in here. That's why he's my top pick at 5-1. to one. I like the way he ran in debut. Took to the rating hole, sat just off of it. Uh, shied a little bit coming to the eighth pole. Tried to go through a little scene between horses. It closed up ever so slightly. A little steady uh, passcode shifted out. Very willing to the wire. The blinkers go on. Gets a good draw to the outside. Doesn't maybe necessarily need to lead. I think this horse can sit just off of it. Follow the dog. 
uh, we thought he'd run well in debut. He did. A solid second. He was gritty right to the end. Took pressure. Boss Boss was a horse that benefited from the early pace battle and rally pass. This is a horse that was a half to clever mind who won early. I believe the Maryland Million Juvenile. So follow the dog. It's going to be strong. I, my th top selection of those the four. Cal Lynch with these two-year-olds. How about this? The last Over the last year, he's four for 13 and 10 for 13 in the money with two-year-old first-time starters. Uh, ROI of over $3, revolutionary. The sire of this two-year-old, uh, Dan's a rebel. He's 27%. Smaller sample, only 15 runners so far, but that's, that, that speaks volumes. Dan's a rebel. Just the way this barn's going with two-year-olds, I'm going to stick with him. Yeah, you get Trevor McCarthy, McCarthy and Cal Lynch. They're 24% together here in Maryland. Cal Lynch with a, with a big, impressive stat with first-time starters. So uh, I didn't use the four. Uh, I might have made a mistake there. I, I throw the three in there. Reds winning call out of that multiple stakes winner. Reds round table who Keith trained. Uh, this two-year-old by Tapazar. And an okay fourth end debut. I think he runs a, a lot better today in his second start. Yeah, he faces, I think, a little bit better group. But like the finish and the gallop out. If you go watch the video of this horse, uh, had a little trouble through the stretch. And, and once it found some room, it really kicked on nicely uh, to the wire. Well, it's, it's a nice group of maiden special yeah. weight two-year-olds here in race two let's turn the page here race three we're going a flat mile on the main track maiden claiming 16,000 for three-year-olds and upward uh, we both like the one here Arcadag mm -hmm. for trainer Tom Morley first start in the Morley barn Fergal Lynch will ride a good second last out against restricted Virginia bred maiden special weight going a mile he's dead fit for the mm -hmm. for, for the maiden score today for strong connections. Yeah, couldn't get it done at 70 cents to the dollar. Vincent Van Gogh, go, though, came back to run well. Ran a 69 in an off-the-turf race last weekend. So Arkadag, it's a little bit of a give-up as well, though, jamming in for the 16,000. Yeah. Be interesting to see if somebody jumps in and, and, and grabs him for that price. I Go for a little higher price, the seven. We made it. A horse that's only run on the dirt one time. That was back at Pimlico in May. You see the short comment, late interest. Had no interest early, but a little bit of a belated run, the final 16th of a mile. The blinkers went on last time a little bit more speed i think he can shake clear in here and maybe carry him coast to coast all right you might get a price uh because yeah the debut on the main track no good then tried the turf three times mm -hmm. did win on the turf last couple i'm, I'm sorry did, did win on the turf and was just disqualified played mm -hmm. second and then the last couple uh on the raise uh and no good on the turf i, I didn't use horse you'll yeah. get a good price there on the seven, we made it. I used the four. Telling Warrior takes a little mm -hmm. drop coming off a, a brief freshening here for owner trainer Amy Cortez. Xavier Perez will ride an okay fourth on mm -hmm. the main track last out against Maiden 25. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprised me at all to see this horse on the engine as well. So maybe a dual could develop between the four and the seven. Seven is just a little bit more price for me. Arkadag should be one, two, uh, rallying into this flow. All right, so we like a couple of the same horses there in race three let's turn the page race four another nice maiden special weight this one for three-year-olds and upward mm -hmm. going six furlongs keith you like the the middle pick mm -hmm. four that starts this race let's check out your ticket see how you played it we'll take a stab a, a lot of users here the, the four and, and the three they're going to be the prime users for everybody i'm also going to throw in the first time starter uh trombata you might have a sneaky good one here by denman i'll go one three four to get you started in the fourth and the fifth three deep as well with the two three four two deep in the sixth the eight and the 12 we're going to single in race seven nico Bree and tj i believe will be the favorite in that race just a little nine dollar ticket to get your weekend started yeah i like that claudio horse uh, in, in the seventh you have there nico Bree and tj is mm -hmm. going to be tough against allowance company today let's take a look at race four real nice maiden special weight going six for longs i go with mm -hmm. the four simpson on top for trainer tim keith sheldon russell rises three-year-old son of bodie meister been right there the last couple knocking on the door right here at Laurel Park a good second mm -hmm. two starts ago against Maiden 40,000 then stepped up to Maiden special eight late July here at Laurel was the favorite that day it was second time blinkers a real good third just got beat a neck 67 buyer gnarly who was second in that race came uh, would uh, come right back to win so I think Simpson's coming out of a strong race he, he's he's been away mm -hmm. he's been off since late July so a little freshening here for my top pick, the four Simpson does have a, a nice little maintenance half mile work, slow uh, 49 half mile. That's not too bad in the mud September 1st here at Laurel Park. So we both like the four Simpson mm -hmm. here in the fourth. Yeah, the only thing that concerns me, a little bit of a hang last time. I know he had some trouble early at the, at the break. He shifted out, made a run. Just 
it should have been stronger. As Cerulean right. Springs has come back and run okay, as you said, Gnarly came back to win. Uh, but at 8-5, to five, I'm going to go elsewhere. Uh, let's go with the one you can never tell. First-time starter for Trombetta. Uh, he's 17% over the last couple of years with some straight three-year-old uh, maiden special weight runners on the dirt. I think that works. Denman, the stallion we talked about, he's been 25% with first-time starters from a smaller sample of only 24 runners. So uh, I, I think the breeding is there on the bottom side. The mare was very quick. Uh, what time it is, 5 for 20 sprinting on the dirt, made upwards of 180,000. This horse works for me uh, in, in in a race where I think the 3 and the 4 are just going to get pounded. I'm going to look for the, the new face. Yeah, Let's some nice some time. nice works right here at Laurel Park. Some nice works from the gate here at Laurel. I like that. Julian mm -hmm. Pimentel will ride. Lasix in debut. Uh, nice uh, homebred here for our Larry Johnson. So we both mm -hmm. like the one. You can never tell. We both like the three here. Money mm -hmm. time by Munnings for Mark Reed. Very good third on a good track at Delaware in debut against Maiden Special Weight. That was August 20th. Uh, well, it waits almost a month to come back here. Second start. Got a 70 buyer with that uh, third in debut up at Delaware. Uh, th this race might 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 be a little gnar gnarly. Was in that race mm -hmm. up there at uh, Delaware. So we're a good third behind gnarly. That 70 might be a little big up there. At Delaware, might might be a, a tougher group here today for the three money time, but we both like them. Right, it's hard to separate. Simpson ran against Gnarly, uh, so he, we're going to see him later. Maybe we would like to see him a little bit early to really kind of get a gauge of right. where he is. We're going to see him in the seventh race, but money time did gain to the wire. Uh, second place finisher in that race was a horse coming in from Belmont out of some good races, an Asbusen runner that I think was like around four to five. So money time was ready first time out. We'll have some other speed to contend with, I believe, with Railmaster coming out of that half mile race at Timonium. All right, we both like the six putting on the outside for trainer Gerald Bennett. He's a Delaware trainer. He's mm -hmm. been running a lot of horses yeah. down here recently. This horse is a sharp uh, half-mile bullet workout up at Delaware mm -hmm. September 3rd. A uh, good second on the turf, uh, last down, real good, a uh, couple a uh, couple nice tries uh, before that, one on the synthetic, one on the main track up there mm -hmm. at Delaware. Uh, this horse will get a nice trip on the outside, the oh. six pudding. Absolutely. It's going to have to be well-timed, though, it looks like. He might have a touch of flattening out in him. Uh, another one that keys up against Gnarly, the six furlongs. Maybe a five and a half at six. Can he go by uh, a couple of these? I'm, I'm not so sure. I think he's a user underneath, though. Yeah. All right, a couple of nice maiden special weights. Uh, in this early pick five, let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the 20 cent rainbow pick six. No carryover. They hit it for almost 5,500 last Sunday. I like the late pick five today. That starts in race six. We'll take a look right after this. Hey everybody, super excited to tell you about a brand new national pick five wager that kicks off on Friday, September 28th. It's the Stronic Five and it features an industry low takeout of 12%. You want action? The Stronic Five is all about action. We're talking five races in less than an hour. Laurel, Golden Gate Fields, Gulfstream Park, and Santa Anita. That's the Stronic Five, a 12% takeout, $1 minimum, and it sets sail Friday, September 28th. All right, welcome back. I'm excited for that Stronic yeah. Pick 5 coming mm -hmm. up Friday, September 28th. Low takeout, what did they say? 12% take mm -hmm. out 12%. there. I saw a nice uh, kind of, we remember I, the, the days of the Magna yes. 5. I, I tried to play uh -huh. that a couple times, didn't hit it. Uh, but I'm going to be going after this Stronic 5. Uh, it's uh, it's going to have races with, with us here mm -hmm. at Laura Park, Santa Anita, Golden Gate. And, uh, and golf Gulf stream, so excited for the Stronic Five. I know you'll you'll be taking some swings at oh it. Yeah, we always hang out a little bit later after the race. This gives us something to sink yep. our teeth into, and, yep. and uh, hopefully a, a very lucrative payout. Well we'll, well, we'll 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 take one down. We'll take mm -hmm. a Stronic Five down. Let's take a look here at race five today to kick off the twenty cent Rainbow Pick Six. No carryover. They hit it for almost fifty five hundred mm -hmm. last Sunday. So we start new today with the Rainbow Pick Six in race five. We're going a flat mile, claiming 16,000 for uh, three-year-olds and upward. Never won three lifetime is the condition. I go with the two, three to 13, my top pick from the Kelly Brain Barn. Georgie Vargas Jr. is going to ride this four-year-old son of Frost Giant. A sharp win 
on the main track at Monmouth late May against 16,002 life that day won by seven and a half with a 76 buyer that's a pretty good looking uh, effort then they took to, took the horse up to Saratoga against 25,000 company going six and a half off off, uh, off a couple month layoff and uh, no good up there but now it gets easier company today and uh, stretching back out to a mile for the two, three to 13. Yeah, Kelly Green has certainly had success when shipping in uh, to Laurel Park. Three to 13 looks like the controlling speed in here. I don't see anybody as quick as him. I think you're gonna see a race similar to that one back in May at Monmouth where he goes to the front, nurses, and, and releases to the wire. We saw on Sunday, and granted this track is fast today, but boy, it is, this racetrack was, had a tendency towards speed and to the inside. Right, okay, yeah. okay. all right, so we like a, a cold yeah. two, three, four, five uh, super here in race five. The three Roman Warrior was entered main track only for this race by trainer Nat Eubanks. A sharp win last out, one by almost five against 7,500 two life. That was going two turns at Delaware. A little bit of a step up today, but catches the race where they come off the yeah. turf with, with, uh, with some scratches. So uh, a nice entering job today here by Annette Eubanks with the three Roman Warrior. Yeah, sudden improvement. Uh, in a little bit closer to the pace last time, showing the horses sharper. He usually fell much further back, was a lot closer last time. So this horse is the major danger from off the pace. If there's any kind of battle up front, it's going to benefit the three Roman Warrior. He looks like he's got the best finish in here. Uncle Billy first off the claim, a little trouble at Timonium. A horse that just hasn't panned out, a $360,000 purchase. Uh... I think the stretch out works for this horse when you really break it down against this field is a half to curl and kid, a horse that we've seen run well going long. All right, so two, three, four, five, all day long there in race five for Keith and I. Let's turn the page here. I like the late pick five today. Late pick five paid almost a thousand last Sunday. Late pick four paid over five hundred last Sunday. So uh, let's take a look here at the late pick five. No carryover, but as always, that industry low 12% takeout means more money back in your pocket if you can hit the late pick five. I'm going to take a shot today. Let's take a look at my ticket, a $28, very affordable $28 late pick five ticket, race six. I like the 12 on top, Eastport. Trevor McCarthy is going to ride for Kieran McGee, a four-year-old son of Malibu Moon. The 12 Eastport is going to be awfully tough here in race six, but I'll take a shot with the two. His Royal Majesty, Katie Davis. She came and saw oh, us yeah. before the mm -hmm. show. Katie Davis back in the saddle today. Race six will be her first mount. She rides the two. His Royal Majesty for Hugh McMahon. So I'll go 212 in race six to kick off the late pick five. Race seven, a nice allowance race. I like the one, Nico, Bree, and TJ. But the two, you're killing me, might be tough in there as well. Race eight, there's a two to five shot in there. Doesn't look like she can get beat. The six, congrats, gal, for strong connections here. J.D. Acosta board for Cal Lynch, where I'm going to single on the six, congrats, gal. I'm not going to try to beat her there in race eight. Another nice allowance race in race nine. Some nice allowance races to finish off this card today. Race three, I like the three. I'm sorry, race nine. I like the three. One more great time. Mario Pino aboard this three-year-old for Jerry Robb coming out of a very good star Danaskra stakes, uh, stakes where he was second behind where she told me to go. Uh, so the three, one more great time. is going to be awfully tough, I think, in race nine. But I'll use the four of Regalian as well in race nine. So I, I, I use pretty much all, all chalk in the first four legs. I'll hit the all button in race 10, looking for a little chaos, looking for a little <laughs> blow up the blow up there. That's a maiden 16,000 for two year old Phillies going five and a half. I think anything can happen maybe in race mm -hmm. 10. Yeah. So there, there's my ticket, a $28 play. Not a whole lot to go on in uh, the 10th. Yep, so I hit the all button in race 10. Let's take a look at race six here to kick off this late pick five, going a flat mile. 25,000 starter allowance, three and up. Never won two is the condition. I go to the far outside here. Eastport, make the rider Trevor McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Trevor McCarthy on this four-year-old Colt by Malibu Moon for trainer Kieran McGee. First start in the Kieran, uh, Kieran barn. He's 21%. From a sampling of horses, of all, almost 200 horses, mm -hmm. he's 21% when he gets new horses in his barn. And this horse has uh, been going on the turf the last couple tries at Belmont and Delaware, but does have some back dirt races back in uh, uh, the spring of April, the spring of 2017. This horse broke his maiden 
uh, against Maiden Special Weight at Gulfstream back in March of 2017. That's during the championship meet. And then it was the, uh, the, the four to five favored against first level allowance company at Keeneland going nine furlongs, a good third that day with a 72 buyer. So uh, he's, uh, he's fit to go a mile today. He gets a, a class relief from the last, uh, from his last dirt tries, class relief today, dropping into the starter allowance company. Interesting pickup here uh, for Kieran. Yeah, it was in for the 20,000. Probably should have won that race, but did have some excuses. You see the shorter come and hop. It was a little rank and had to work between horses. But, uh, yeah, he looks like a better horse on the dirt to me. Uh, he's had more success. So Eastport, yeah, I think he's on the on the leader just off of it at a very short price. All right, so we both like the 12, Eastport on top. You like the 8. I didn't use the 8. Who's, you, you, who's, who's Sparty. the 8 there? Sparty, okay. Yeah. Uh, Tim Woolley. Mm-hmm. All right, I didn't use the eight. Yeah, I look, going back to two back try for this level for the 25 is good enough for me. I don't see a ton of speed in the race. Uh, Sparty, I think, can maybe shake clear. Esports not going to let them get too far away, but maybe they can kind of do a little bit of a lineup and go one two around the racetrack. All right, you might get a nice price there on the eight Sparty. We both like the two. His Royal Majesty. Good to see Katie Davis back. She's on this four year old mm -hmm. for trainer Hugh McMahon. He's been hanging around at this level. Uh, a good third two back as the heavy favorite behind Coop tries harder. Mm -hmm. Good second before that behind Southern Wild. They would both come back to win. So this horse been running well at this level the last few races. Gets a good rider today. Yeah, maybe Katie can pick this horse, get a little bit more finish. He's just been kind of flat the last eighth of a mile. Uh, Look like he should have had that field over a barrel two races back. He couldn't get it done. Uh, as a shorter price, I'll use underneath. Elementary, I like that. I like the sudden improvement with elementary. If you're looking for a closer in here for Susan Cooney, this horse made a run from another county last time right. and was able to sustain o on the grass course, but hinted with some improvement on the dirt. Uh, two races back behind a key horse, Sonic Boomy Jet, who was held for him. And Susan Cooney and Xavier Perez, they hooked up with a long shot winner last uh, Sunday with the race off the turf. Uh, Whiskey Woo. Yes, Whiskey Woo. Uh, at, at a big price. So nice uh, positive ROI uh, with the X-Man and mm -hmm. Susan Cooney. So we both like the four elementary. Let's turn the page here. Race seven kicks off. The late pick four, a nice first level allowance race, three and up, going six furlongs. You have a stat. We mm -hmm. have a stat here. We both like the seven home run maker from the Jeremiah Englehart barn. Here's the stat you have for Englehart. Yeah, it's just a smaller sample, but, boy, when this barn comes to Maryland, you better watch out. Home run maker for Englehart. Englehart is four for six and six for six in the money the last two years at Laurel with an R ROI of 446. Awfully strong home run, home run maker fits in this race. He can't let the speed of Nico Breen and TJ get too far away, though. He's going to have to grind him down. I think he's a user, though. This stat, that when this bar comes in, they mean business. All right, so we both like the seven. I, I didn't pick him on top. Let's check out the picks uh -huh. here uh, for race seven. I we both I think we both like the one, Nico yes. Bree and TJ on top. This is a nice three-year-old by Freedom Child, a Maryland bred for Claudio Gonzalez. He's done a real nice job with this horse. They made over 120000 mm -hmm. Carlos Carrasco will ride. Carlos Carrasco, he doesn't ride too many horses here, but he does ride for Claudio yes. Gonzalez, and mm -hmm. they're 41 percent <laughs> together from a good a good amount of horses in that sampling of nice positive ROI. So Carlos and Claudio, they're live. And this horse on the cutback from a mile to six furlongs last out against Stakes Company in the start in Asker. They went a quick time that race, 109 flat. Where she told me to go was locked and loaded. Mm -hmm. One more great time. I like later on to today in the in the other allowance race coming up in race nine. I like one more great time on top. I think the one Nico Bree and TJ ha has enough early speed right. to bully himself into a good early spot. Uh, yeah, with an alert break, he should be able to shake clear in here. I was a little surprised to even see that much speed turning back and distance could be even sharper uh, today. Nico, Bree, and TJ, I like right to the front. All right, so uh, I use it too in my exacto. You're killing me from the Ro Robertino Deodora barn, a good third last out. That was back in the early, I was back in mid-July at Belmont against Starter Allowance Company up there at Belmont, going seven furlongs, got an 80, got a 74 buyer that time, got an 80 buyer when this horse was second against Allowance Company on a good track down at Oak Lawn back in April. So mm -hmm. he's run some big races, has some lines in his form over the summertime, very lightly raced this summer. Uh, so he's coming back to the races after having a little time away, about a couple months, been working okay up there on the Belmont training track. Well, you know, this other thing, it was split. Uh, both both 
both legs they're, they're strong uh, yeah good good race good job uh by by the racing office but Bo Vuk to me I, I'm going to use him underneath uh I, I I think he's the legitimate closer in this field I think you're going to have horses kind of maybe get a little weary chasing the speed of Nico Breen DJ and Bo Vuk we know he can get put to a ride leaving the far turn they usually settle him early he makes that sustainable run Bo Vuk's been consistent I like him underneath in here the main threat if anybody's going to kind of come and, and wear down the speed it's going to be him and, and you said it consistent he's been very consistent Bo Vuk very sharp right now for owner trainer Robert Vukalik Taylor Hole he rides this horse well so we like some same mm -hmm. horses there race seven let's turn the page race eight kicks off the final pick three of the day we're going six furlongs a nice first level allowance race for two-year-old Phillies Cal Lynch has a two to five shot near the six congrats gal we have a video spotlight to show you of this two-year-old philly by congrats here's the debut back in june here at laurel park oh boy what a flash of speed she showed early early burst the comment in about the two path under the stick there to about the eighth pole ridden out the final 16th of a mile by jd acosta congrats girl was ready in debut uh got away with a three to one price boy she won like a four to five she's going to be about two to five maybe one to five when it's all said and done this afternoon uh, has, has come back with a great win, I mean, a, a great effort in, in Schuylerville up at Saratoga. The field kind of got away from her on the turn, but she kept turning onto the wire a little too quick early last time out, faded late. But against this group, she should go ahead and dictate with an alert break. All right, uh, has a nice work, a nice maintenance half mile work in the slop uh, September 8th here at Laurel Park. So Cal Lynch, he's 23%, nice positive ROI with his two year olds. He has a heavy favorite here in race eight with the six congrats gal i used a seven in my exact and no refunds mm -hmm. a two-time winner here for trainer john salzman jr uh it's a homebred for the moberly family two-year-old philly by buffham nice allowance win at timonium late august so she's uh right back in here for this condition and for the fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar claiming tag yeah, upset win got a got, got a dual set up at Timonium, I still didn't expect that kind of run from off the pace. She was able to sustain and go clear. Yeah, she might rally into it. I think the other the other Cal Lynch runner might be the main threat. Belly Al, another a winner at, at, at Timonium, kind of took a right turn out of the gate, but got position and just one clear. Is an improving type. It may be uh, Elysium the eight. I, I, I think the three of the eight are the only real threats to the six. All right, so nice allowance race for two-year-old Phillies. The six, congrats, Gal, a heavy favored in race eight race nine is going to kick off the late daily double first level allowance contest three and up going six furlongs to three one more great time is my best bet of the day i think this is three-year-old son of great notion uh homebred for clover hill farm and jerry rob a nice win against allowance company two back here at laurel park that was late july and then a very good second uh second at six to one last out in the start in Ascra behind where she told me to go, who's now a multiple stakes winner, where she told me to go is they ran very quick in the start in Asgra, 109. That's a serious time. One more great time. I think it's going to go to the front today. Might have some other speed to go with them, but uh, I'll trust the uh, I'll trust Pino up front to uh, to to have a nice uh, front ride front ride front end uh, riding uh, score. He, you know maybe Pino takes back if there's some other speed, but Pino's very good at getting to the front and controlling the early pace. Yeah, we like this horse at two. He's even gotten much better at three, and as you say, awfully rapid, but. He, he he's no slam dunk i don't think because the, the one king's house if he breaks he is awfully quick and he showed that speed last time similar internals 22 and 145 he could be a little bit of a thorn in the side of one more great time uh, i think it's going to set up beautifully for the seven mesotherm we've got a video spotlight from that debut run and when this horse showed that promise took a long time to get to the races very patient uh it was lacy god that matthew scarab with this horse but man it's paid off, and you see this horse into the turn number four that day, back on April April the 20th. The Laura going seven furlongs, another tough, tough distance uh, to run to run well at in a debut run. Just bottled up around the turn. There you see another little steady pass at three-eighths pole, and look at that early quarter. 23 and 2, 47 and 1. Uh, Saratoga Bob just walking on the front end. So for this horse to make up any kind of ground uh, indicates how, how, how strong and how talented he is. Shifts out off of a little bit of traffic here coming to the 16th pole and kicks on nicely to close about three lengths to the final eighth of a mile. And look at this run and carries it out through the gallop out. This horse has improved ever since. Has won two of its next three. Comes off a win at Saratoga. I think he's just going to be spying the speed 
uh, and improving type as well. Like I say, the patience has paid off sure. uh, for the connections of Mesotherm. Yeah, you're right. He's a five-year-old. Uh -huh. Didn't make it to the races until he was five, April of his five-year-old career, and he hasn't been off the board. So, yeah, he gets a nice trip today with mm -hmm. Centron. He'll be awfully tough. I, I used him in my top three. We both like the four as well. Regalian with a sharp win. Last out against uh, straight three-year-olds, 20,000 at Saratoga, mm -hmm. going six and a half in the mud. He clobbered him that day, one by six with an 83 buyer. Claimed out of that race by Tom Morley. Mm -hmm. Now faces older horses. Big step up from that straight three-year-old 20,000 at Saratoga, even though he got a flashy number with that big win. Big step up to Allowance mm -hmm. Company today, but it looks like Morley has a nice three-year-old. J.D. Acosta will ride. He steps up to take older. Maybe a little more moisture in the track would have benefited him. I kind of hedged thinking there might be some rain, uh, but Regalian gets a fast track. He's going to have to move up off of those fast track efforts. Dr. Bolt. Don't, don't leave him out underneath. Right. I, I, I think he's a sneaky long shot in here. You're going to get double digits. That was a good effort in front of Iredella, multiple winner, dog soldier. This horse can make a run. All right, so nice allowance race to kick off the late double there. Race 9, race 10 is a maiden claiming 16,000 for two-year-old Phillies going five and a half. I think it's wide open. Scratch the four, Rosuri, who is seven or two. The four is out A race 10. I hit the all button this race on my late pick five ticket. My top pick in here, the three, Kim's pet, nine to two for trainer Linda Albert, a homebred for the Murray family by Patientville. Seven pound apprentice Antonio Quills will ride an okay fourth in debut here at Laurel against Maiden 25 and then stepped up to Maiden 40 at Timonium, no good. I think a little class relief today gets the three, Kim's pet, Kim's pet back mm -hmm. in a good form. Yeah, it was a victim of a real bad jam up at the break at Timonium. Uh, this is the right spot down to the 16,000. I'll have to go for the stranger, the two American star. Hasn't been seen since May, and that was at Evangeline Downs. How's this Louisiana bread <laughs> make its way to Laurel <laughs> Park? Star I don't know. I don't care. Just win, baby, right? right? I, that's all I need you to do. Took play, got the uh, improved on the rail comment. I like that. Showed some late life. And this trainer, Rodolfo sanchez Salomon, he wins races, and he usually wins at a square price. Yeah, Rudy having a nice year, about eight. 18% winners on the year for Rudy Sanchez. Uh, used to be the assistant for uh, for Kavisky. Okay. Now now doing well on his own. So we both like the two. We both mm -hmm. like the eight a little bit here as well on the outside. Sip of sunshine for John Salzman Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the uh, five pounds off with the bug boy. A good second. At least uh, woke this horse up. Yeah. Good set. This horse has her early speed. Just can't can't get the distance going to be struggling to get five and a half today that's the whole key correct uh, you know uh, a good effort at timonium but th that extra you know now we're talking a furlong another what, yeah, yeah, furlong and a half furlong and a half yes yeah, so a sip of sunshine we'll be on the engine we'll be out on the front end probably can clear this field but uh, that last eighth of a mile concerns me no doubt all right that's it we're out of time a big 10 race card today to kick off the three-day Race weekend, glad you're with us. The Rainbow Pick 6, that starts race 5 today on the 10 race car. Dave Rodman, he's coming up next with scratches and changes. Good luck. Good luck.